November 4th. Today we commemorate our Holy Father Ioannikias the Great, Hermit on Mount Olympus. Our Father Ioannikias was born in 754 in Bithynia. Of peasant stock and of a pious disposition, he looked after the pigs from the age of seven and with his parents was drawn to the iconoclast heresy. At the age of 19, he joined the Imperial Guard and proved a valiant soldier. He was convinced of the iconoclast error by an aged ascetic whom he met 17 years later while on campaign near Mount Olympus in Bithynia. The young officer repented there and then and venerated the icon of Christ with faith and made up his mind to lead a life of ascetical struggle and penitence. Five years later, in 795, there was an invasion of Thrace. The emperor, Constantine VI, gathered a strong army against them, but was heavily defeated. Even so, the emperor noticed the outstanding bravery of Ioannikias in this encounter and wanted to take him into his personal service. But the sight of massacres and other horrors of war had brought home to him the vanity of this world. He asked leave of the emperor to retire from the service in order to wage unseen warfare in the ranks of the angelic army. He made his way to the monastery near Prusa where Abbot Gregory, seeing his lack of instruction, advised him to look for a monastery where he could get an ecclesiastical education and learn the elements of ascetic life before joining experienced monks. He stayed for a number of years in various monasteries and was an example to the Brotherhood in his struggle against self-will, love of pleasures and temptations of all kinds. But he thirsted for a more solitary life and asked to spend some time alone with God on the mountain. He stayed on the mountain for a week, observing a complete fast, occupied in praying God to let him meet a spiritual father, able to lead him along the way of perfection. On the seventh day, he met two hermits who had the gift of foreknowledge. They predicted the way of life he would follow and gave him a tunic of hair and a cross, assuring him these would be of great help in his warfare against the spirits of darkness. From that time the saint entered upon his solitary life. He settled first on Mount Trikalika, but as he soon became well known and sought after, he fled to a cave lost in the depths of a dense forest. Only the shepherd who brought him bread and water once a month knew where he was. After three years, Antony, a fellow countryman who had also renounced the world, came his way. They set off together for the wild wastes of the mountains near Myra in Lycia. On the road, Ioannikias met a maiden beset with temptations of the devil. He went up to her, told her to place her hand on the back of his neck and said, By the power of Jesus Christ, may the temptation that is assailing you fall on me. While the maiden returned in peace to her monastery, the saint retired to a cave and was subject to dreadful attacks by the demon of fornication. Three years later, as Antony had gone back to the monastery, Ioannikias made his way to the wild mountains where he stayed for four more years. In 808, following a vision, he retraced his steps to Hellenspond, in order to receive the great angelic habit at the monastery of Pandemon. Then he spent a year fastened to a heavy iron chain in a cave somewhere in the confines of Bithynia, and after that three years, under the direction of the great ascetic George, with whom he completed his monastic training. In 810, God showed him in a vision that it was time to leave the wilderness and to work for the salvation of souls. He settled in the monastery of Trikalika, where he became well known for his gifts of 
pre-knowledge and of power over animals as Adam had in paradise. Many people came to see him. He comforted troubled souls. He brought sinners and iconoclast heretics back to the path of truth and virtue, and he healed the sick. He was made all things to all men without ever losing the quiet and passionlessness that God granted him as the reward of his labours. The gift of prophecy shone brightly in him. Among other things, he foretold the fall of the emperor Michael I in 813. He foretold the seizure of power by Leo V, the Armenian and the latter's dreadful persecution of the Orthodox. When he returned to the walls of Lycia, at the beginning of Leo the Armenian's reign, St. Ioannikios was poisoned by a sorcerer named Gurias. The following night, St. Eustatius, whose memory we keep on the 20th of September, St. Eustatius appeared to him in a dream and gave him a piece of wood to eat that cured him immediately. In thanksgiving, he founded a church and a monastery there that eventually numbered more than 70 monks. On another occasion, he saw a miraculous spring appear in a dream and he heard a voice telling him to build a chapel in order of the Mother of God and also a monastery at that place. And the saint immediately set about building and helped the worksmen by his miracles. He caused the snakes that overran that site to vanish with the aid of his staff on several occasions, and ever since he has been venerated as a protector against snakes and all venomous creatures. He then founded a third monastery dedicated to the holy apostles Peter and Paul before going back to the wilderness to converse alone with God. During Leo the Armenian's persecution, his inspired words and miracles consoled and strengthened the faith of many Orthodox monks and laymen who visited his hermitage. One day, a disciple who, unbeknown to the saint, had quietly entered his cell, saw him in the air, a foot above the ground, his soul caught up into the delights of the world to come. He left his desert only on three occasions to try to bring back to the Orthodox faith the abbot of a monastery who had fallen into heresy. When Leo the Armenian died in 820, the man of God finally returned to his cell in the monastery at Trikalika. His fame spread all over the East, and no devout Christian would pass through the region without coming to take the great elder's blessing. One day he left his cell to go to Thras, where by a miracle he freed some Christian prisoners held by the Bulgarians. In 824, a party of 100 of the most eminent churchmen of the day, including St. Theodore the Studite, Clement the Notary, and the Metropolitans of Chalcedon and Nicaea, they all came to visit him. They asked him the question, which is the greatest virtue? St. Ioannikias replied that humility is the greatest. For the word of God made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a servant, out of humility, in order to deliver us from death into which our forefather Adam fell through pride. As he took leave of his guests, he alluded enigmatically to the future of some of them that he could foresee. During the war against the Saracens, he wept tears of compassion on hearing of the dreadful plight of the Christian prisoners, and during the night that followed, he appeared to them and miraculously loosened their bonds. One day a monk, who was skeptical of the saints' miracles, came to visit him. The man of God welcomed him and offered him a meal. As they were at table, a bear suddenly burst in and terrified the company. Ioannikias called it softly, and the animal came and lay at his feet. Then he told it to do the same before each of the guests. 
The saint said to them, At their creation, the animals looked with veneration on man, who is made in the image of God, and he had no fear of them. We are afraid of them now because we have transgressed God's commandments. If we love the Lord Jesus and keep his commandments, no wild animal will be able to do us any harm. In 829, Theophilus became emperor, the most fanatical of the iconoclast rulers. He was a violent persecutor of the church, especially of the monks who took a stand for the holy icons. However, in the last year of his life, he began to wonder where he had been in the right after all, and sent to seek counsel of St. Ioannikius. The blessed elder's answer to the imperial envoys went straight to the point. He said, Whoever refuses due honour to the images of Christ, of the Mother of God and of the saints, will not be received into the kingdom of heaven, even if he has lived an otherwise blameless life. As those who treat images of the emperor with disrespect are severely punished, so those who dishonour the image of Christ will be cast into everlasting fire. It is said that on his deathbed in the following year, Theophilus asked them to bring him an icon of Christ, and he kissed the icon of tears before breathing his lust. His wife, the most pious Empress Theodora, did not delay in arranging for the consecration of St. Methodius as Patriarch of Constantinople, which St. Ioannikius had prophesied. This was in the year 842 and marked the final restoration of the veneration of the holy icons. In the years that followed, the Patriarch was engaged in restoring order to the Church while tempering the severity of canonical discipline in the case of bishops and priests who had fallen into heresy but who were willing to repent. This course of action was unacceptable to some hierarchs and monastics including the monks of the Studion in Constantinople. St. Ioannikius, therefore, came in person to the city in order to lend the weight of his authority to the lenient policy of St. Methodius. When he got back to his hermitage, he found that some monks, jealous of his influence, had set it on fire. Among the crowd, helplessly watching the blaze, St. Ioannikius had no difficulty making out those responsible and at once went up to them. Addressing them in a kind and friendly way, he suggested they eat together of the same food he had managed to save from the fire. He was then more than ninety years old, and he did not rebuild the hermitage, for he saw in what had happened the sign of his departure. To prepare for death, he went to the monastery of Antidion, where he had made his beginning in the angelic life. He fell asleep in the Lord on November 4, 846, having predicted that his friend, St. Methodius, who had come to visit him, would follow him eight months later. At the moment of his death, the monks of Mount Olympus could see a pillar of fire rising from the earth to the sky. His holy relics have continued ever since to work many miracles. His skull is venerated today at the monastery of Pantocrator on the holy mountain of Athos. Blessed is our God, always known forever to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Thee, our God, glory to Thee. O heavenly King, O Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, be gracious unto our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil ones. Amen. With the streams of thy tears, thou didst cultivate the barrenness of the desert. And by thy sighings from the depths, thou didst bear fruit a hundredfold in labors. And thou becamest a luminary, shining with miracles upon the world. O Johannicius, our righteous Father, intercede with Christ God that our souls be saved. I shall open my mouth to chant, and with the Spirit shall I be filled, and words shall I now pour forth unto the Mother and Queen. And I shall be seen in joyous jubilation, acclaiming exultantly all of her wondrous deeds. Holy Father, Johannicke, I pray to God for us. Since thou art made bright with the splendor of grace, O righteous Johannicke, enlighten them that celebrate thy memorial with faith, and by thine intercessions deliver them from the darkness of sin. Holy Father, Johannicke, I pray to God for us. Let us walk the way that leads to the heavenly city without ever turning back, O Johannicke, for the Holy Spirit who rested in thy heart guided thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou hadst the humility that exalts, O Johannicke, Wherefore, we beseech thee, have compassion on our lowliness, O righteous Father, and lighten all the painful sorrows of our hearts. Both now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. Thou art the restoration of the fallen and the certainty of them that stand, O our blameless Lady. I beseech thee, set my mind upright, which is fallen through sin, that I may glorify thee. Make steadfast, O holy Theotokos, thou living and never failing spring, all of them that form a company, and gather for to praise thy name, and by thy grace, divine O maid, deem them all worthy of a glorious crown. O holy Father Johannicius, pray to God for us. Thou didst exchange the fleeting for the enduring, wisely taken up thy cross, O Johannicius and retiring like the very great Elias to impossible mountains, where thou didst persevere. O Holy Father Johannicius, pray to God for us. The way that thou didst exceedingly long for was shown to thee who shones with the gift of prophecy by the pair of fathers that thou found, who had been hiding in the mountains for many years, O blessed Ionicius. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Troubled by sundry passions, we flee with faith to thy protection, O Ionicius. By thy holy mediations, beseech the friend of man to visit our soul. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. With the sprinklings of thy mercy, O Virgin, grace of God, quench the coals of my passions, and kindle the quenched lamp of my heart, O golden lampstand, thou, O Immaculate Lady. With zeal didst thou forsake the world's delight and joy, and being pierced in soul with strong divine desire. O righteous Father, thou didst run to follow thy Lord and Master. 
having quenched the furnaces of the passions most mightily, with the Holy Spirit do a blessed Joannicius. Thou dancest now in joy with the angels, whose life thou didst imitate without blame. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All of my life has passed in sloth and indolence. Now I am nigh the hour of my departure hence. And how I fear my wrathless foes, O Lady, O all pure virgin. Lest they rend my soul in twain, I am utterly terrified. Lest they send me to the pit of perdition, O Bride of God. But have compassion on me, thy servant, and rescue me from their condemnation. When the prophet Abakum, O thou most high, learned of the divine and untraceable counsel of thy pure incarnation from the womb of the Blessed Virgin, he cried out, Glory to thy power, O Lord my God. O Holy Father, John Echius, pray to God for us. Thou tookst possession of the most exalted mountains, O wise John Echius, and exalted by lowliness, thou brought low the heads of the demons, and didst prevail against them, O boast and foundation of monks. O Holy Father John Echius, pray to God for us. Armed with the fear of Christ, as with a two-edged sword, thou didst noetically cast down the apostate dragon, O Blessed One, and was palpably made glorious with sacred triumphs. O Holy Father John Echius, pray to God for us. Holy set aflame with the divine spirit, O Father, Father, thou didst endure the freezing cold for many years, going about in the deserts and seeking the Lord, who warmed thee with divine grace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. By thy supplications to God, O Father, visit us who are troubled by spiritual infirmities, and now invoke thee with faith that we may honour thee with reverence. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. With faith I entreat and I pray thee the mercy seat for all mortals. O blessed Lady, make the judge thy Son gracious to me, that I may duly glorify thee. All creatures were sore amazed at thy divine and great glory made, O pure virgin who hast not known wedlock. luck. For thou didst told in thy womb the God of all, and gavest birth to the timeless Son, who doth grant salvation unto all them that acclaim thy name. Holy Father John, Echius, pray to God for us. Thou didst walk the narrow and afflicted way, while being enlarged with the divine ascents of the heart and divine visions, O righteous Father. And truly deified by adoption, thou now dwellest in the heavenly city with exceeding joy. Holy Father John, Echius, pray to God for us. When thou hadst purified the eye of thy mind, O righteous John, Echius, the gift of prophecy was given thee, that by the grace of the Holy Spirit thou mightest speak of things to come as present, and see things afar off as close at hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Deliver me from the grief of sins and afflictions, make the pain of my heart to cease, and grant me forgiveness of my failings. Since thou hast God, the giver of good, hearkening to thy holy supplication, Both now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. Cure the straying of my mind, O blameless one. Heal the passions of my soul and drive away the darkness of slothfulness. That with praises I may hymn thee, the ever-blessed, O all hymn Theotokos. 
On this divine and most honoured feast of God's all holy mother, let all of godly mind now celebrate. Come, let us faithful now clap our hands and send up glory unto the God whom she has born. O Holy Father, join Achaeus, pray to God for us. Withering the passions of the body, O Johannicius, thou becamest like a towering tree, sacredly bearing as fruits thy miracles and august achievements. O Holy Father, Johannicius, pray to God for us. When thou drankest deadly poison at the hand of the unjust one and wast in peril, O all blessed Father, the Lord healed thee through a vision of the martyr Eustatia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou was acquainted with innumerable pains, O Johannicius, being found in the infirmity of the body. Wherefore I cry to thee with faith, make the pains of my sicknesses to cease. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O oh, only help of all, help us who are in dangers. Stretch forth thy hand, and lead us to the haven of salvation, O oh, maid most graced of God. Thou hast appeared as a bright star that shone upon the earth, illuminating all those darkened in the passion's gloom, and a most propitious healer of those in sickness. Wherefore, since thou hast received the grace to heal all ills, grant all healing unto us who now entreat of thee, that we all may cry, Rejoice, O Father Joannikias. The God-inspired life of thine achievements has flashed out like lightning in the world, O all blessed Joannikias, and has chased off all the mist of the soul's passions, shining in material light on those who with faith and longing cry out to thee such things as these. Rejoice, delightful boast of monastics. Rejoice, luminary, making the whole world brilliant. Rejoice, speedy consolation of those in sickness. Rejoice, unshakable support of the hale and mighty. Rejoice, for thou didst reject the earthly army. Rejoice, for thou didst barter the corruptible for the heavenly. Rejoice, genuine dispenser of godlike virtues. Rejoice, worker of unspeakable wonders. Rejoice, destruction of every passion. Rejoice, our most fervent protector. Rejoice, readiest deliverer of every mortal. Rejoice, refuge to which the whole world flees. Rejoice, O Father Joannikias. Rejoice, O Father Joannikias. No created thing, but only the Creator, would the godly minded youth adore and worship as God. But manfully trampling down threats of fire, they cried out, O supremely praised and all acclaimed one, blessed are thou, O thou Lord God of our fathers. Holy Father John Echius, pray to God for us. Thou who madest thy heart to be the Trinity's dwelling, builds three temples, O John Echius, wherein gushes forth by divine grace for the enlightenment and purification of them that come to thee in faith. O Holy Father John Echius, pray to God for us. Ever illuminated with the brightness of the divine spirit, thy soul, sacredly made wondrous with prophetic foreknowledge, beheld the purposes of those who came to thee with faith, O Johannicius, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. By thine entreaties, O blessed one, free me forthwith from the tempestuous maladies of soul and body, and make me to sing, 
O supremely praised Lord and God of all fathers, blessed are thou, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Since thou alone gavest birth to the unchanging Lord, O pure virgin grace of God, Entreat him that with his right hand he change my mind for the better, grievously perverted as it is to the pursuits of life. Three guiltless youths cast in the furnace were saved by the offspring which the Theotokos bear, that in figure and in type now in very truth indeed, and he has gathered all the world which cries out in chant, Ye works of his, O sing the Lord's praises, and exalt him greatly for ages and all ages. Holy Father John, Echius, pray to God for us. Standing on the mountain top like a lamp on a lampstand, O righteous John, Echius, thou didst enlighten through faith the thoughts of all, excellently pointing out to them the path of life and leading them up by the divine counsels to the height of dispassion. Holy Father John, Echius, pray to God for us. With a mind purified by dispassion, that it's converse with the Lord Almighty, initiated by him into ineffable mysteries, O righteous Father, as a great prophet, that it's prophetically foretell what was to the salvation of our souls, Wherefore we, the faithful, acclaim thee with one voice, O our blessed Joannicius. Holy Father Joannicius, pray to God for us. Grievous stripes are come upon me, and I am storm-tossed, and sicknesses heaped one upon another. I entreat thee, Father Joannicius, free me from them, since thou hast received from God the grace to heal the passions and to lighten the pains of the faithful. We bless the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With all the hosts on high, let us him, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the undivided Trinity, the uncreated Godhead, will crying out in exceeding gladness, Holy, 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 one authority, principle, and kingdom. Both now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. Thou becamest higher than the angels when thou ineffably gavest a body to God. Entreat him, O our blameless lady, that I might rise above the fleshly passions in lofty lowliness of mind, praising with songs thy majestic grace. Let every earthbound man unleap in the spirit, and now hold his torch on high. And let all the bodiless noetic hosts now celebrate joyously the Theotokos' sublime and sacred festival, as they cry out, Rejoice, O thou, all blessed one, ever virgin and pure mother of our God. O holy Father John, Echius, pray to God for us. Since God gave strength to thy mind, thou didst avail to subdue the passions, Wherefore thou becamest an angel in the flesh, O Father, and with the angels in the heavens thou dwellest always, standing at the throne of glory, filled with the light that has no evening. O Holy Father John, Echius, pray to God for us. Thou didst dwell in mountains and caves, as though in heaven, O righteous John, Echius, wherefore wild beasts dwelt peaceably with thee, who has wholly subjected the refractory passions of the soul, and was already reckoned a righteous man, for this cause with the faithful honour thee. O holy Father John Echius, pray to God for us. Thy sacred and holy relic lying in the grave, buries diseases and scorches the troops of demons in every hour, a wise John Echius, while gushing forth healings by divine grace to all that ever bless thee in faith. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. All already near to Christ, as thou art with greater openness and purity, remember those who remember thee with faith, O Joannicius, and ask in our behalf for the forgiveness of sins, deliverance from all maladies and communion, in the kingdom of God. Both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Enlighten the eyes of my soul, O pure virgin, who didst conceive the light, and may the deepest darkness of sin not overtake me, nor the pit of despair engulf me, but do thou thyself save me and guide me to the haven of the divine will. 
Wise Father Joannikias, the lusts and yearnings of the flesh, didst thou most wisely make subject unto the mind sovereign mastery. From this thou hast attained the height and pinnacle of things desired, and God-like glory now is thine, and cease not making entreaty for us, O blessed Father. Wisdom, most holy mother of God, save us. More honorable than the cherubim and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, thee who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos thee do we magnify. Glory to you, Christ God, O hope, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Holy Father, bless. May Christ, our true God, the prayers of his holy and all pure mother, with the prayers of St. John the Baptist, of the holy and all praised apostles, with the power and under the protection of the holy and life-giving cross of the Lord and all the holy bodiless powers of heaven, with the prayers of our fathers among the saints, Ninian and Cuthbert, the bishops of God, Cisoes, the great Brandon, the navigator, Oran of Iona, Columba of Iona, Kenneth, Ronan, Molwag, all the saints of all these islands, our protectors and our benefactors. With the prayers of our Father among the saints, Joannikius the Great, with the prayers of the Hiram Martyrs, Nicander, the Bishop of Myra, and Hermas the Priest, with the prayers of the new Hiram Martyr, Seraphim of Uglich, who labored in America, with the prayers of St. Clather of Cornwall and St. Briston of Winchester and those with them whose memory we keep this day, with the prayers of the holy ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and he loves mankind. Amen. Heard the prayers of our holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Amen.